Eric Pika, you're an American. You're based over in Washington, D.C., and yet you say that the U.S. government has been the biggest block to this Paris Agreement. Tell us why. Well, the United States government came into this negotiations with a few things in mind. One is they wanted to further undermine the concept of common but differentiated responsibility. The second piece was loss and damage. The United States wanted to remove the idea that an island nation who could be going extinct because of climate change, based on the emissions where the United States is 50% of the historical emissions, that they, don't, they, they, they should not have the ability to use liability and compensation as a way to, to, to compensate their people for this loss of land, loss of resource, loss of community. When you have these add-on clauses, does that completely eradicate or even dilute what came before? The island nations wanted to have loss and damage in the actual text, the articles. The United States were able to put in a decision underneath it that said that in reference to loss and damage, you cannot talk about liability or compensation. So what they've done is they've gutted through some, some interesting kind of crafting of language, they've gutted one of the concepts, key concepts, to the idea of loss and damage. I've been speaking to different government negotiators, even ministers, in the last hour. Many of them are very upbeat, if not because their wish list has been ticked off. At least they say that this is light years from where we were at Copenhagen as a world. Yet you say the ship is going down. What does that mean? When we say that the ship is going down, it means if you look at the mitigation targets, it commits to 1.5 in the preamble, you know, as a, as a goal. But there's no way, there's no means of getting there. It talks about reductions, peak emissions by 2050, or as soon as possible. But it doesn't give us the specificity of how we get there. It says we have to be carbon net neutral by 20, by 2000, uh, 2100. It doesn't tell us how we're going to get there. We know that if we're going to stay below 1.5 degrees or even 2, we have to be decarbonized by 2050. And so when we say that the ship is going down, is that the lack of specificity and the lack of recognition that we are running out of atmospheric space to pollute all that carbon means that this agreement's not going to do what it's supposed to do.